We are going to have to appeal to swing voters in every part of our country. I am the candidate that gives our party the best opportunity to secure that victory and ensure that the Labour Party and Keir Starmer never walk through the doors of number 10 Downing Street. We need to win. And my friends, we can win against Keir Starmer, who is a patronising plastic patriot. He is beatable, but he is only beatable if we deliver. Yes. Enough of the pollsters. It's now over to you guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, hands together if you would. Rishi Sunak. Hello, sir. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Yes, yes, indeed. Members here see their pounds shrinking probably as fast as they see their high streets closing. Why should we take financial lessons from you? Well, if you, you're picking the one year, if you look at actually the period in both of those forecasts, you'll see that we're either the, the second fastest in the G7 or indeed in, in, and much higher in the OECD. So we had a faster recovery than other countries out of COVID and we were growing faster than last year and this year, and unsurprisingly, they're catching up. So if you look at it over the period, you're we're actually... you where the economy is. We're, we're actually... No, wait, no, if you're saying that we're bottom of the pack is what you're trying to allege, right? Yeah. So if you look at well, over the period, we're actually ve very much in line or to the top end on the G7. But of course I want to see growth growing, Nick, right? Of course. explanation, now, if you would, just so we get a sense, uh, a little bit of more, more of you. Mr Sunak, would you support the return of grammar schools? Yes. Um, why? Well, but as you heard from me earlier, I believe in educational excellence. I believe education is the most powerful way that we can transform people's lives. But I also think there's lots we can do with the school system as we have it. Now, what Michael Gove did several years ago was transformative. And Michael took on some vested interests, challenged consensus, brought in some reforms that mean that millions of our children now are better off. Right? Now, but that's a conservative way to do it. It's not about throwing more money at the problem. It's about reforming the system to get better outcomes. And we should not have closed our schools. And I think it has caused a great deal of damage to children. And what we need to do is help children. So first of all, I would make sure we are supporting children in the early years, which are incredibly important. We need kids who get to school to have, to be able to count, to be able to read, to be able to do all those basic things so they can benefit from a primary education. And look, I've got two daughters who were out of school during COVID. I know it was very, very tough for them. I know a lot of teenagers in particular are suffering from mental health issues. I'd want more mental health support available in schools, but also in GP surgeries to help children uh, and, and we need to put the extra effort in. A lot of experts say that schools were vectors of infection. Wasn't it necessary for the safety of the school staff, the teachers, the caretakers and the pupils? You say no. Well, there was a time, I think I remember, during Covid when, when, when we kept the pubs open but the schools were closed. And much as I love going to the pub, I probably think it is less necessary. This party has been brilliant um, in, in its vision for the Northern Powerhouse, for Net Zero and for levelling up. But this isn't being delivered and isn't at the centre of this campaign. And the, no the Treasury seems to view the North as a cost, not a great value for money investment. Uh, you know, I'm going to actually completely disagree with you, right? So I've been in charge of the Treasury for the last two and a half years. I'm the most Northern Chancellor that this party has had for something like 70 odd years. I'm the Chancellor that put the Treasury in Darlington. And if you just think back five years ago to a place like Teesside, we had lost a steel plant. 5,000 people lost their jobs. And you look at it now, it's a place that is brimming with opportunity and optimism about the future. Now, I work with people like Ben Houchen and local people there to help deliver that. And I want to bring that same degree of optimism and excitement across this country and across the North. I've done it as Chancellor, and I will definitely do it as Prime Minister. Right. We know there have been cuts in HS2 uh, rail links. What would you do if you become a Prime Minister to um, change the um, cuts which have been made? And some, con some cities, including my city, has been treated unfairly. What I would do for Bradford is proceed with the Northern Powerhouse Rail, which I think will make a massive difference. And uh, as a teenager, I used to go to Bradford to visit the ice rink. I'm a keen ice skater. And uh, it, you know, the, the connection between Leeds and Bradford is not good enough. 
and the rest of the and the rest of the north of England. I've also said that West Yorkshire really suffers from not having better commuter transport. It is appalling that, I mean, and we've all been stuck in traffic jams today, frankly, and we know it's holding back opportunity and growth. Many schools, without consultation with parents, took the opportunity to remove all the girls' toilets. We have girls across this whole country who will not go to the toilet during break times. I want you to bring in a policy that guarantees that our daughters can go to a toilet in a safe environment in any school in this country. So, I... I, complete, I completely agree with you. I have sought to clarify that as Women's Minister. I've been very clear that single-sex spaces should be protected, particularly for young people, as well as vulnerable people in for vulnerable women in domestic violence shelters, uh, for example. And I can assure you, as Prime Minister, I would direct that to happen because our girls need, to, you know, it's a difficult time being a teenager, uh, being a young girl, and you should be able to have the privacy you need in your own loo. So I 100% agree with you and I would make that happen. But what of a pupil who is transitioning? Where does he, she go to the toilet? Well, first we of all... I, no, I ask, do we have boys, girls well, and well, a another? F first of all, I do not believe that under 18 should be able to make irreversible decisions about their own bodies <laughs> that they might, they might come to regret later. <laughs>